one of the criticisms, which I think is fair, so I, I don't want to stand here and just only blow China's trumpet and say how amazing and perfect everything is. I think I should criticize a bit. Uh, and people have mentioned this, they are on very few women. Um, so obviously the standing committee has no women and uh, the Politburo this time as well has no women. So before the Politburo, so for the 19th Congress, the Politburo had one woman. She's had to retire because she's, I believe, 72. So now we have a situation where the Politburo has zero women, which, yeah, that's, that's um, you know, yeah. it, it should be more women. Um, there so there's, there's two things. Yeah. yeah. It's just one that, firstly, tokenism, you know, these people, if, if there's a woman on the board, she, sh she should be there for the right reasons on the, the committee uh, because she's, you know, uh, competent and good, not because she's just a token. We don't want to have tokenism. Um, so, yeah, but I'm sure there are many competent, you know, members of the party who are women and who should be here. Um, so it is, it, is a, it is a bit of a shame, this. I think that this is yeah. not uh, yeah. an advancement. However, what I will share then is that you do have um, a lot of... I'll, I'll look for this while you speak, Chris, uh, if you want to say something about this. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so just with what you said, with, with tokenism, um, in, in the West, obviously, it's a big thing that, that this government doesn't have enough um, women, people of colour, trans representation, so on and so forth. It, in the West, mm. the, the argument is that it needs to have one of each sort of flavour of people to be to be whole. Um, China it, it's, d doesn't have the same sort of social issues that have driven a lot of these sort of problems in the West to these points. From the set, offset in the Chinese Revolution, as, as Mao famous said, women hold, hold up half the sky. The idea of women's liberation was was there and emphasised and pushed from the word go. Um, so I don't think China has this issue of institutional sexism that is commonplace in the West. So mm. as much as the aesthetics, we look at this and say a, a bunch of men, there should be a wo woman. I, I want to sort of play devil's advocate and say, well, I think it's it's not that women have been excluded. It's just that out of sheer chance, mm. the people are there were better than, than the people who weren't this time round. Next mm. time round. Mm. Yeah. So, so I think it's that if there were women who were who were candidates, unfortunately, they just didn't yeah. make the cut, not because they were women, just because they, they weren't, the standards weren't high enough. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I do think that there is probably, um, uh, there is still probably hurdles. No, probably. There are, I think there are hurdles still with sexism, even, even in China. Um, yeah. Perhaps not to the same extent in other countries, but I still do think that there is um, a degree of, of, of work to be done. I mean, if you think, that 120 years ago, at the turn of the 19th century, women had were having their feet bound, and yeah. um, so, you know, and, and practices like that under the imperial system. Um, it takes time to break those kinds of things, and and, the, and to be honest, that's where the, the party I think comes in. Then the party you know, did a lot of work to break those kinds of habits and traditions and uh, backwardness. Um, so yeah, but there's still work to be done. I think you, you know you can't just arrive all of a sudden. Um, with with new culture, um, no. even even the Cultural Revolution didn't really uh, create the maybe as as much as it wanted to in terms of changing uh, culture. Um, but like this this one's quite a road, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's a journey. It's a journey. Um, so this one, I think, is a, is a as much as the current uh, Politburo does not have any women on it. Sadly, um, there is progress though uh, in terms of the delegates. So the broader infrastructure, party infrastructure, and membership coming up from the bottom, you're seeing a growing um, percentage of women. So uh, this talks about obviously 33.6% uh, 33 from front lines of work and production. So you're talking about actual factory workers and farmers, um, as well as ethnic minorities. So people, you know, from, from the mountains and from all sorts of the other um, autonomous regions uh, who are coming and, and speaking and having their voice heard at these, at, at the Congress. Um, uh, then it also talks about the other women. So where's the statistic? One second. Uh, it's been going up. Here we go. So let me just go back to the farming thing here. So, of course, you've got... Uh, so the 771 of them are from frontline work and production. So 192 of them are workers, 84%. Uh, 85 are farmers, 3.7%. 
and then 266 professional technical staff is accounting for 11.6 percent so talking earlier about um, that consultative democracy i mean this is pretty good to have just common workers and farmers there in the congress um but yeah, yeah coming back to the female thing so female delegates were at 619 delegates which is 68 more than the 19th congress so more than the last congress nine uh, 68 more so it's increased by 2.8 percent from this one to the last one so it is on the rise um the female delegates are increasing and and obviously and as time goes on um you know over the next 10 years or 15 years those delegates will grow and that will then equal more um people on the the, the politburo as well as eventually the standing committee and hopefully one day uh, general secretary